hi and hello to everyone in this video we are going to discuss about the double sideband suppressed carrier type amplitude modulation it is also called dsbsc where dsb is the double sideband sc stands for the suppressed carrier am is the amplitude modulation welcome to the lecture first we will see how to produce the double sideband suppressed carrier modulated signal for it's very simple if you can multiply the message signal m of t with the carrier signal cos omega ct the output is called the double sideband suppressed carrier and also remember the message signal can be called by different names like modulating signal baseband signal and the output signal is called as modulated signal right this is a, a, a message is the modulating signal the output is the modulated signal let us look at the spectrum of the message signal and the modulated signal i am taking a message signal we very well know that the relationship between the time domain and the frequency domain okay we should be good in fourier transform i have made a separate video to understand the fourier transform the link of that is given in the description you can watch that now let me take a message signal m of t whose spectrum is given as this so m of t which is in the time domain in the frequency domain m of omega right we can clearly see the spectrum from this spectrum we can see in look at the positive frequency it is from 0 to 2 pi b so the bandwidth is 2 pi b radians per second now this is the carrier signal carrier signal is cos omega ct so it will be oscillating between the magnitude amplitude 1 and minus 1 continuously now what happens to the amplitude modulated signal which is uh, double sideband suppressed carrier am signal which is m of t cos omega ct so you multiply m of t with cos omega ct we will be getting this signal this signal is the double sideband suppressed carrier signal we can also verify by looking at the shape of the envelope the envelope is nothing but the outer most this this dotted lines right okay this lot of this dot these dotted lines are the envelopes these are the envelopes okay look at the look look at the shape of the envelope it resembles the shape of the message signal because it's natural right if you multiply m of t with cos omega ct uh, it will be the resembling the shape okay now we look at the spectrum we know that a product of message signal with the cos omega ct the spectrum is given as 1 by 2 times m of omega plus omega c plus m of omega minus omega c right this is this relationship can be obtained from the fourier transform right you can see the video given in the description now we already know what is m of omega so what is m of omega plus omega c that is this m of omega is advanced by omega c so instead of this is centered at origin right so this will be shifted to minus omega c what about omega minus omega c this m of omega is delayed by omega c right okay and what and the amplitude given is 2a since we have 1 by 2 here now the amplitude is only a right the amplitude is only a so this is i can say this is the spectrum is advanced advanced by how much omega c so instead of zero it is moving to the left that is advancing by omega c so this part and this part is also shifted by omega c right then what about this this one this one is the spectrum is delayed spectrum is delayed by how much omega c so instead of starting at zero it is starting at only at omega c you can see this zero is coming here right so we can see this 2 pi b will be moving to omega c plus 2 pi b this minus 2 pi b will be shifted to omega c minus 2 pi b okay now look at what is the bandwidth look at the positive frequency this entire stitch is the positive frequency the spectrum is here so the difference between the upper cutoff and the lower frequency this frequency and this frequency is 4 pi b okay the difference between omega c minus omega that is how do you calculate the bandwidth 
the upper frequency is omega c plus 2 pi b minus what is the lower frequency lower frequency is this part omega c minus 2 pi b omega c minus 2 pi b okay right so this is the bandwidth is equal to omega c omega c is get cancelled this minus minus becomes plus so it is 4 pi b so the bandwidth of the double side band suppressed carrier is twice as that of the message bandwidth it needs the two times the bandwidth of the message signal okay so now we learnt about the, the spectrum of the double side band suppressed carrier amplitude modulated signal this is the spectrum okay now we have to get a point important point why it is called suppressed carrier right we very well know that carrier frequency is omega c you can see here carrier frequency is omega c we don't have any in any separate component at omega c only we have the message signal at omega c minus omega c and omega c we don't have any mean separate component for the carrier okay that is why we say it is a suppressed carrier maybe in the next video i will be helping you to learn a simple double sideband with carrier in the um, in that we can see that we will have a separate component at omega c okay now in this we don't have any separate component so it is called double sideband suppressed carrier okay then why it is called double sideband we can see the spectrum <coughs> let me take this spectrum it is located at omega c right okay so the the component the frequency component above omega c this part is called upper sideband below omega c this part is called lower sideband similarly if we take the negative frequencies which is less than minus omega c is this part is called lsb that is a lower sideband which is up this part is above the minus omega c which is the upper sideband so if you look at the spectrum it is very clear that it is having both the upper sideband and lower sideband upper sideband and lower sideband that's why it is called double sideband and it is not having any separate spectral component at omega c that's why it is called suppressed carrier okay now we will see how to demodulate <coughs> how to demodulate okay for that what we are going to do with demodulation is opposite to that of the modulation in this the input is the modulated signal which is m of t cos omega c t our objective is to get the message signal right okay so what is e e is the product of m of t cos omega ct multiplied with cos omega ct so it becomes cos square omega ct this sort of modulation are called are called please note down they are called coherent coherent demodulation this sort of coherent demodulation or it's also called synchronous synchronous demodulation okay why it is called coherent because the both the modulation both the modulation and demodulation uses the same carrier frequency okay that is why they are called coherent right that is why they are called coherent okay coherent or e coherent demodulation now what happens this is your cos it becomes cos square okay we know that uh, what is cos square okay yeah, I made this is cos square cos square omega ct okay what is cos square omega ct it is 1 plus cos 2 omega ct by 2 we multiply everything inside so this is your e of t expression now we will go for the spectrum of e of t right so we have e of t here e of t here which is m, m, m of t by 2 plus m of t cos omega c t divided by 2 ok so uh, we already know what is the spectrum of m of t right if you can see here the spectrum of m of t is here right now we need m of t by 2 so what happens it is the same uh, instead of 2 a the amplitude will be half of it which is a we got this part okay now what about uh, m of t cos 2 omega ct by 2 
we already we have done for we have drawn the spectrum of m of t cos omega ct is nothing but this spectrum that is m of omega is advanced by omega c and delayed by omega c the amplitude is divided by 2 here instead of omega ct what we have we have 2 omega ct that means it is shifted by advanced by 2 omega c and delayed by 2 omega c clear right and what happens to the amplitude already it is half times and here another 1 by 2 is there okay now the amplitude